It's episode number 11 of Binding of Isaac Explained. Hats and characters. These things are relatively easy to implement, but they add a lot of depth and variety to the game. So how does it work? Well, Isaac carries five invisible hats on his head, and his face is interchangeable too. So if you take certain pills, then you'll get the derpy face. And then if you take Steven, then you get a little bump on your head, that's a face. Or, or if you take the, the poop item, you get a little big poop on your head. And you can have both of those, because they're on different layers. Now if you have two hats that are on the same layer, then one will override the other, and you, you will only have one. And we, it's not a perfect system, I guess. It'd be better if there, there were better choices for when you get the hats. But the way we did it still allows for a lot of variability, I suppose. Okay, so what happens is that when you pick that little Steven, well, not the one that's uh, familiar, but the one that, that grows on your head, that one just goes and it turns one of your invisible hats into that little Steven face. So that's cool. And then the same thing goes for the poop, only that the poop picks a different one, because each one of the five is for a different layer of hats. By doing it that way, we guarantee that the hats are always on the layer that they're supposed to be on. Even though, I guess when you're looking the other way, it might look weird. But normally you'd always have the one hat that should be underneath underneath, at least if you're looking forwards. Additionally, within each hat is the graphics that are applied whenever you're facing in a certain direction. And the way that's handled is that it uses frames within Flash. Because Flash is greatly based upon animation, you can have uh, an object and that object can have different frames. And if you let it be by itself, it'll just play through those frames. But if you're using code, you can tell it to which one of the frames it'll go. And that's how we did it there. So basically, if you just let the hats play, they, they loop around as if they were rotating. But then the, the script tells them to go to the correct frames and they're facing the same way as the head is. Sadly, it's far from perfect. Like, for example, you could have the steam sail sign, the Frankenstein screws, or the, the ladle spoon bruises that you get from picking up the wooden spoon. But you can't have them at the same time, because they're all on the same layer. So if you have one of them, they override each other. Which is crazy, because you could have all three of those and they would look good. So that's too bad. Uh-oh. Sadly, we chose some of the layers rather inappropriately. Like, for example, you can't have technology and the battery sticking out of your head, even though they're on opposite sides. But conversely, you can have the Steven face and the rock sticking out of your head, even though they're on the same side, and they weirdly overlap in an unappealing way. Oops! Yeah, it would have been smart if we had made a left and a right layer in this case. Oh well, too bad, I guess. Good thing they fixed all that in Rebirth. So as you see, you can have a multitude of possible appearances and abilities based on the items that you get in Isaac. And so no run is the same as another run, and you're never looking the same, and it's all beautiful. Next up is characters. We got Judas, Maggie, Kane, ah yes, and then we added many more. Good stuff. And they are so simple, you just have like one dedicated hat that can't be overridden, and then I guess their graphics change in the cutscenes and they get different achievements. That's pretty cool. So much variety being added just by such simple changes. And they have their starting items. I guess that's the biggest difference because the early game is the most important part of a roguelike. If you're always starting with that same item, it's a way different feeling than if you're starting with that other item that that other character has. <laughs> and then we have the hard character. You, you like playing the game with red hearts like it's meant to be? Well, try playing it only with blue hearts as the blue baby. Come on, you can make do with incredibly infrequent health drops. What's the matter? Play the game! <laughs> That's how you get all the best achievements at playing the hard character. And then when I even added another hard mode, oh, gee, sure it's great to play that one with the hardest character on top of it. <laughs> oh, but then again, that's probably still not as bad as in Rebirth when they made that character that dies in one hit no matter what. Uh-oh. <laughs> How did Edmund trick people into playing that one? Oh, <laughs> well, good thing he added that, that one item that allows them to get hit once per room at least. <laughs> wow, such charity. Anyways, you're probably wondering, why didn't we make it so in the cutscenes the characters are wearing the hats? Because we already have established that the hats are doable facing forwards. So it should have worked, right? Does that mean that the items you pick up are not canon during cutscenes? Or were you just too lazy to put them in? Did we think it didn't look good if it scaled them up? Uh-oh. 
Well, I think we should have probably put them in, considering they're flash. They probably would have scaled up nicely. Or was it an artistic choice to make it seem that you're naked and without power when facing these great enemies and you're just there crying in your fetal position, not having access to any of your powerful items? Maybe? <laughs> Anyways, I guess what's really important is that you can become a woman, and it's as simple as putting on a wig and identifying as one. How progressive. That's right. <laughs> There's this one time where I met this crazy person online, and he said, Oh my god, it's Florian! Hey, do you approve of the fact that, that Edmund is trying to turn the frogs gay by pushing a transgender agenda by having female characters in his game? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. I guess trans people being valid is a fine choice by me, mm? And then the mods told him to stop being political. Well, there we go. Justice has been served. As long as you're being transphobic, at least don't be political, I guess. Uh -oh. <laughs> Anyways, if you liked that video, why don't you click on the link in the description and check out the other 10 videos. They're in a convenient playlist for you. Man, 11 videos. It's been a while, huh? Pretty cool stuff. You can hear all kinds of stuff about Isaac, and there's more to come. More Isaac explained. Yes, sir. And look at me, I went an entire episode about hats without making a Team Fortress joke. Ha, huh, how much I've grown. <laughs> okay.